Welcome back to Switch to Linux and a tin foil hat time. Linux in Windows. What does it mean? Well, if you're unaware of this, maybe you've seen some of the news releases saying that Windows 10 will now be shipping with a full Linux kernel. What does that mean? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, first, uh, this is, and by the way, those articles are a little bit of a misnomer. It's not in Windows automatically it's something you can install natively in windows through the windows store you all know how much i love the windows store it's kind of like saying hey what can we do to get everybody's information about everything i got it let's just lock a lot of things into a proprietary store that you can't get access to anything without having a user login for hmm there's a good way to grab a lot of people's user data um, but anyway, what is this? So straight from Microsoft's site, this is dealing with a system called Windows Subsystem for Linux. So basically what this is, is a way to run and test Linux applications without using any form of virtual machines or emulators. So of course, in the Linux world, we can run several Windows applications on Wine or uh, there's a few other ones out there as well uh, that you can use to install uh, install some Windows applications on. You can't always use a virtual machine, but this is this is to be able to run apps more natively in the Windows environment. And so they created this Windows subset for Linux, which initially was a completely homebrewed Linux type emulation-y type thing. And you could get in there and install it from the store, of course. And as you installed it from the store, uh, you could get in there and use uh, you could get in there and use some Windows applications, uh, or excuse me, some Linux applications on a Windows system natively. Why would one want to do this? Well, there's a lot of types of jobs out there that do require you to manage Linux servers or run Linux applications, and you know, you're running it from a Windows server, so traditionally you've either had to boot up a virtual machine or maybe you use PuTTY and SSH into a Linux server somewhere else. There's a lot of different things you could do. This is a way to help speed up some of the development time and development process by running some systems uh, on Windows. So is this an extend uh, embrace, what is it, embrace, extend, extinguish model, which that is a term tied back to Microsoft back when in the days when Microsoft was saying Linux is cancer. And then uh, right around this time, they had this model where you would take the, you know, they, they would adopt something, grab some project, embrace it, say, oh, this is so awesome, and then extend it. So add a lot to it, add a lot of the functionality and then destroy it or extinguish it by making sure that only your proprietary format would work. Is that what's going on? Well, we'll get into that in a bit. Now, what does this allow you to do? First, you have to go into the Windows Store, which means not only do you have to have a Windows 10 computer that is harvesting a lot of data, unless of course you're on enterprise and you have that turned off, but then you have to create an account on the Windows Store and then you need to install your Windows subsystem for Linux. And then you grab your distribution. As of now, you can do Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, um, Leap42, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, uh, Debian, or uh, Kali. So you could grab any of those, and I'm sure there's other ones that are um, that are probably looking at being added to the system as well. This allows you to test a lot of things, to do a lot of Linuxy things inside of a Windows world. So the question is, is this their version of Embrace, Extend, Extinguish? Probably, but the reality is it probably isn't going to work. And the reason is we have to look at who are the Linux users out there in the world. So I, I looked at this and said, I think there's kind of three basic Linux users and there might be more for sure. I am absolutely open to more types of Linux users. Let me know where you are. Number one type of Linux user is a developer who generally wants to use Windows, but needs to get in and do something inside of Linux. 
This is really who these this is targeted to. It's so that people don't have to dual boot and don't have to putty into an external machine. They can get in, they can do all their Linuxy stuff in their Windows development environment, and it saves a little bit of time. Now the second type of Linux users are those without the funds to buy a brand new computer or purchase a Windows license. I think the most popular YouTuber I know of that would fall in this category was Chris Ware. He talks about starting using Linux because he couldn't afford to do anything else. And then he just grew to love it and said, this is awesome. And so, you know, he's stuck with it because Linux is awesome. And so people without the funds looking for a way to not have to buy a new computer or not have to pay for an upgraded license, but instead just continue to use the system that they have, these people sometimes will switch to Linux. And then the third are the people like me. I don't want anything to do with Windows, not because I think Windows sucks and just doesn't work. It's because I don't want my system to be giving all of that information to Microsoft. And there are a lot of people in that boat. I don't want to be sharing my private data with Microsoft. There is absolutely no way to turn all of it off without having a big enterprise license, and that is just too much hassle for me. If I can't get in here, install my system, and have my system only be my system without constantly ho phoning home like some lost space alien, <laughs> um, then in, in which case... I want to run Linux because I don't want things constantly checking home. I don't want things that are constantly out there sticking out their probes out to the internet, connecting to little thingies here and there. There's a large number of us who use Linux for that reason. Now, the reality is that second and that third group are a lot of Linux users. I'm not sure I would say half because Linux is so used in the business environment that there's enough people out there to say, let's go ahead and start with having our development environment on Windows, but we need to use Linux in some way to do our work. So we can virtual machine it, we can SSH it, or we can install a a uh, subsystem for Linux so that we can do development right here without messing with any of the other things. It's probably faster and more efficient to do the Windows subsystem for Linux because in a business world, in a business environment where we are attempting to get real work done, it's more convenient. That is where my channel intersects because I am about teaching people how to do real work on Linux systems, bypassing Windows altogether, not because I think Windows sucks, but because I'm sick of Microsoft's data collection. And so with all of that being in, in mind, this is, in my opinion, a way for Windows to attempt to embrace Extend Extinguish. But what's going to happen uh, if they're successful is they'll just kind of cause a little split. They will embrace and extend, but they will never be able to snuff it out. There's just too many little flare ups of Linux in all of the different places because there's the fragmentation, because there's the different philosophies. So whether we're talking about having a national desktop or um, uh, Chris Titus Tech Today did an awesome video, check it out about why your Linux distribution does not matter. Um, in fact, I did a one very similar like that a few months back as well too. Um, and I think both of us had, had very overlapping agrees, agreement there. It doesn't matter which Linux you use, just use Linux. Just get in there, pick a major distribution that works, that has a lot of support, learn how to use it and keep using it. Awesome, awesome plan, as awesome plan. All right, there's enough people doing that that don't care for that Windows environment system that they're going to try to embrace Extend Extinguish. They're going to find themselves trying to blow up about 5,000 of those candles that never quite go out. You never have those put on your birthday cake. You're going to blow them out. And then they, you know, you get one out. Finally, you go to blow another one out. And this one sparks back up. That's going to be the Linux world. It will not be extinguishable. It will not be. Um, so that really is the matter. This is their way of increasing some efficiency and probably attempting to clear this out. Now, why do I say that Microsoft isn't just, hey, they've changed their mind. They no longer think that Linux is a cancer. They have full-fledged adopted. They've open source. They have released the calendar application in the open source code. Um, why do I think that? 
because obvious things are still a little obvious to me, I do my writing on LibreOffice. I think LibreOffice is a perfectly fine application. And if you take LibreOffice and you set it upright, meaning that you export the documents in a docx file and you have the system fonts installed that Microsoft is also going to have, you will have very little. I would say 99% of users are going to have very little difficulty sending those documents to somebody in uh, using Word or you know Microsoft Office in general. But the thing is, is that there is this, this open source, well-known, well-documented document format that is an open document format, ODT file. If Microsoft was really truly loved open source and embraced open source, then they would allow Microsoft Office to open that document up, which it will open almost every time perfectly but it gives a big, scary, this could be a virus warning. When they get rid of that big, scary, this will be a virus warning and make sure that Microsoft Office opens an open source document format, that is going to be the sign that they truly embrace open source. It will open just fine. It just gives a big scary warning first because they want everybody on the proprietary docx format. See, these are those little things we look at. Is this a case of embrace, extend, extinguish? Absolutely, it is a case of extend, uh, embrace, extend, extinguish. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now for other reading about this, there is a great article on its FOSS. Um, I put that in the uh, chat there and I'll put it in the comments for the uh, pre-recorded video later and uh, this is uh, it's bad news Windows 10 will soon have a real Linux kernel this is a great article we're not going to flip through it I encourage you all to go and have a read through that article uh, especially there's a neat rant at the end of it I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to spoil the rant go go watch that uh, or read that rather but that's kind of my take on this all right is this the end of Linux is this like oh my god this is, is the end no not at all not at all, because there's going to be that subset of population that's not necessarily 50%, but not peanuts either, that uses Linux because Windows is an option or uses Linux because they don't want Windows to be an option. Those are the people that are going to be keeping Linux alive and well. What does this mean that they have, they're putting the full Linux kernel in there? It just means that people who work, who prefer to work with Windows but have to use Linux applications are doing fine. Is this the end of the world? No. Um, do we need to watch this? Maybe we want to watch it a little bit, but at the same token, it's not going to be the end of the Linux world. Linux is going to persevere. This is not, this is not the end, but definitely read that. It's FOSS article. It's great. Um, so with that being said, thank you everybody for coming along on this short rant. I'm going to hang out here and uh, chat with you guys for a while. Uh, as long as uh, there are comments to read. And uh, the edited version of this will be out shortly. You can help support the channel with the links up above me or in the description down below. And follow along on the social media if you would like to get some updates as to when we are releasing new videos. Thanks and always switch to Linux.